Okay. So thanks for coming. This is Joe. I'm going to talk about uh, Pearl Dancer. Who's ever known uh, about Pearl Dancer? Can you raise your hand? Do you know about Pearl Dancer? Uh, no. Sorry. Okay. Yes, but never use it. That's fine. Never dance. Never dance. Okay, I'm not going to dance today, <laughs> so <laughs> too bad. Uh, just a, one slide about me. So my name is Dan. I'm a Perlmonger from Paris. Uh, I'm one of the core developers uh, of Pearl Dancer. I arrived uh, late 2010. Uh, I wrote uh, a book on Pearl with uh, three other Perlmongers. It's called Pearl Modern. It's a French book, so you should go buy it even if you don't speak French, so it makes us rich. Um, no, I, I, I mention that each, uh, every time I, I can because I think it's very rare that uh, books are written in anything else than English and talks about Pearl and is not crap. And we tried um, very much to make that book not suck too much. So, yeah. uh, and wait to contact me. Right. So, what's Dancer? Dancer is a web framework for Pearl, uh, but it's Lightweight, it's an effective, CPAC friendly, and fun web framework for Perl. It also a uh, PSGI compatible uh, web framework for Perl. Who knows about PSGI in this room? Okay, quite a few. Um, I, I won't talk too much about uh, that because uh, it's not really the subject of the talk. Uh, but it's the new way to uh, make uh, web stuff. Uh, today, be it in Python with WSGI or Ruby, have the same thing. And now we have the ODAT, thanks to Miyagawa. Miyagawa. And um, yeah, Dancer, what is it? It's a, a web framework, but primarily it's a domain specific language, so DSL, for building web application. So DSL is just a set of keywords, so we have very few keywords, and with these keywords and options, uh, you can actually build a lot of uh, interesting stuff and build your uh, web site or web application easy. So it's root based. Uh, it's a root based web framework that makes it very intuitive and very thin, uh, very thin layer on top of. The framework. Okay, I'm going to, to talk a little bit about the, the origins. So, at the time you had, a uh, uh, long time ago, you had CGI and CGI Sorry? No, Miyazaki. It's a picture from Miyazaki. Yeah. So that's roughly what it is. It's a big step with, uh, yeah, it's kind of a monster or module. Who's ever used the CGI.pm or CGI.pl before or stuff like that. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's, yeah, that, that's what we, that's how it was done uh, in the 90s or something like that. So that's an example, uh, CGI, blah, blah, blah. You have to get the parameters yourself and uh, decide what to do, and then you print everything on the, the stuff output, so it's kind of <coughs> uh, slow and maintainable and boring, I mean, <coughs> kind of. Now we have uh, Big Sister uh, Catalyst. So <coughs> this is Optimus Prime. <laughs> uh, so Catalyst is great. Uh, this is an example of how you write a uh, file of your web application in Catalyst. Catalyst is powerful, but our opinion is that the price to pay is complexity. Uh, so Catalyst is great if uh, you want to build very large or complex application uh, and so on. And even MST would, would say that you think, um, I would say for some problems, you know, Catalyst is uh, really what you need to use. And for other problems, um, smaller frameworks like Tensor is what you should use. 
<coughs> so the, the, the goal of Pearl Dancer is, you know, is to make web development simple again and fun again and easy again. When I tried uh, Dancer, I virtually never uh, built a real uh, website and I needed to do a web application. So no website, no HTML, I needed to do a web application talking um, using the REST API to a backend, back and forth, and so on. I was a bit lost. And then some people said uh, on uh, hash for well, why, why, why don't you try Dancer? And, and I installed Dancer, I read the documentation, and asked people around for uh, the first day. The second day, I implemented the <coughs> application, and it was done. So I said, oh, in two days, I managed to write a web application, and I knew virtually nothing about web development before. I should, you know, look into this project. And a few weeks later, I was involved. Um, so the inspiration is Sinatra. So not the singer, actually, yeah, a little bit the singer. <coughs> it's the, the Ruby framework. So that's Ruby code, and uh, that's uh, using uh, Sinatra. So Sinatra is our inspir inspiration. It's a micro web framework based on roots. So as you can see, have a mouse, yeah. Uh, but you don't see anything, so it's okay. You have uh, a root is a keyword, get, and then a path, and then some code. Okay, so that's in Ruby. That's the equivalent code in Dancer. So it's very similar. Reminds me of something you just said before. Uh, so you use Dancer, and this is a, a, a root. Okay. So get slash hey sub hello world. What that means is that uh, the the get is actually like the HTTP uh, word get. Okay. So when users do a, a get on slash hey then we return hello world, the, the content. And then you just have to, uh, to call dent at the end of the file for everything to just start up and, and run. Okay, so that's our logo. We also do nice t-shirts you can buy online. <laughs> uh, the features, we try to make it explosive, uh, effortless, modular, and really lightweight. Uh, we try to keep the dependencies to CPAN modules very, very low. Uh, I think we have uh, is it three or four uh, dependencies which don't have any uh, more dependencies, so it's very lightweight. And we don't go back to the bottom like some other web framework which re-implement everything, so no dependency at all on CPAN. But we think that there are uh, some very good things on CPAN we can use, but we keep that at the minimum. So here's how to dance. Uh, first of all, first of all, you need to uh, install it, um, and so you need to install the, the module, and then you have to you know make it run on the server. But there's a standard on server uh, that comes with it. And by default, it runs properly, so you don't need to configure anything when uh, you want to try Dancer. So, sudo cpan m Dancer, or cpan m Dancer if you're in your local library. Uh, everyone uh, knows about cpan m. Who doesn't know about cpan m? Very good. Okay, uh, check it out. So, you do that, and so you have Dancer installed, and so it comes up with a um, a binary called Dancer. You use that minus A and the name of your application, and that's what we call scaffolding. So it would create, it would create uh, a set of directories. So uh, I will show you that later. But there are very few directories. So that's the dot dot dot. And then you go into uh, super app directory it has created for you, and you run bin app.pl, <coughs> and that's it. You already have a running application with a default uh, index page, and so on. And that's a uh, global server, uh, pure Perl, so no dependency, and it installs uh, everywhere. And so, you know, in, in literally five minutes, you install Dancer, 
and you can run that uh, uh, directly. You're not obliged to do scaffolding, uh, meaning generating a standard application for you. You can do a one-liner. So you can actually uh, use Dancer as a module directly and execute you know, your, uh, uh, your roots directly in your uh, one-liner and then uh, dance at the end. <laughs> and if you curl, so if you do get get or curl on uh, the server, uh, it will return golf as expected. So by default, the port is 3,000 that you can send that in the configuration. So that's not something I recommend, but it's just you know, because people keep asking, OK, can I use it without scaffolding? Yes, you can. Uh, what about deployment? Because uh, if you have, when you have your application, and let's say you've uh, built up the small stuff, and you're happy with it, uh, how do I deploy it? Uh, I have an Apache. I have uh, I, I want to, to not use Apache. Uh, I, I have to, I'm obliged to use Apache at my work with small perm and so on. So because uh, Dancer is based on um, PSGI, and thanks to Plaque and other stuff like that, uh, we can deploy virtually anywhere. And there is a, and there is a, uh, uh, spelling mistake on that word. So basically, uh, I'm not going to talk about PSGI more than that, but uh, there is a way to deploy on Apache uh, with Modpel, a uh, standalone server. Uh, there are uh, pure Perl servers, PoE-based servers, uh, coroutines-based servers, I think it's called Twiggy, stuff like that. So uh, basically, in every situation uh, where you have Perl, basically, you can have uh, PSGI and then Dentsu on top of it. Um, yeah, Dentsu script is a PSGI application. Okay, now let's talk about roots. So a root, roots are Dentsu's wires. All right, okay, why not? Uh, basically, what's a root? Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, can I define a root uh, in runtime? Yes. Because roots, when you, uh, that's an example, uh, get slash arrow sub, you can see that it's, it's, it's a normal Perl code, actually. So it has a nice syntax, but it's actually, uh, this is a method with string slash as first argument and uh, a code reference as a second argument, right? So this is this is a completely standard Perl. It, it's not interpreted. It's re, it's it's code which is executed. Okay. So uh, and and many plugins and all those stuff like that. When they are loaded, they add more roots. For instance, you just have to to call this code and it will add uh, a new root when it is executed. Okay. So it's not uh, like roots uh, in in. Uh, Java web frameworks and so on, where it's all in a, a big, huge Excel file, like anything in Java, basically, uh, which is interpreted only when you start your server, you know, and you have a whole API to add roots. No, then a root is uh, a function you call, and so you can, you can call that as many uh, times as you want. So it's an HTTP method, a path, and a subroutine. So that's that's here. So of course we have uh, other HTTP method. Uh, get, post, delete, uh, update, blah, blah, blah. And we have a special keyword called any, which is uh, which uh, will uh, uh, answer to every HTTP <coughs> method, and you can have a subset of them as well. So this is an example, get slash something, set static root. Okay, so we return <coughs> to co the, the, the uh, in this case, static root is the content that is returned to the uh, web browser. It's not very helpful, but we get to that a bit later. So let's talk about the path. You've seen that uh, here, in this case, uh, slash something is hard coded, right? Okay. But you can write something like slash profile, slash column user, okay? And in your code, you can retrieve the parameter, so the user parameter, using params, okay? 
and that makes it very easy to get parameters from the URL. However, you can use wildcards if you want, if you're that kind of people. And so you can get the files and the extension using the special keyword splat. Okay? So in these two slides, you've seen that we've used get, parents, and splat. And these are three, uh, three methods, three new keywords, and that's part of the GSL. So basically, that's what it is. Uh, then so it's just a set of uh, uh, keywords of functions that are very useful uh, and, and you're supposed to use it like that. So with Splat we can get our um, arguments in, in, in wildcards forms but you can also have pure probe regex. Okay, so it's a bit uh, crazy. So strange regex but actually uh, using Splat again then you will get the the, the, the match, and you can see there are uh, uh, parentheses there and there. And so, the, if the regex matches, then you will retrieve dollar one, dollar two, and so on uh, using splat. So it returns a list of uh, the matches of the regex. Um, now, in, uh, I think it came with Perl five ten. You can have uh, named matches in your regex, and uh, you can get them using captures. Okay. So what we're talking about right now is just about the path of the roots. So that is to explain that you um, Dancer is a root-based application, so you know it wants to do everything with roots at first, but you have a lot of flexibility with the, the path and uh, the verbs and the, the code uh, you write. So uh, that's how it reached it reaches the, the, the flexibility and the power um, it has. Now, as you can see here, and in the following example, all what we did was returning some content, you know. So that would give us a crappy uh, web page with a static root written at the top. However, of course, Dancer uh, uh, supports templates. And so you can, uh, let me explain it here. So here we have, uh, sorry, we have a, a root, so it's hooked on slash. And when the user gets on slash, instead of returning uh, uh, the content directly, we call template, and the name of the template we want to display, and who is uh, hashref which contains the variables we want to send to our template engine, okay? And that's very simple, uh, template index variables. That we return the real content, okay, with HTML, blah, blah, blah. So either you put that at the end of the root or you do return to make sure that this is what's returned from the, from the root. We support a hell lot of templates and all uh, templates engines are available using this keyword so we have, of course, Template Toolkit, uh, Mason. Uh, I have a list of all uh, templates. So it's really, uh, I su do support a lot of templates. And basically, um, here, index, that's the name of the template. And all you have to do is have a file in the uh, slash views directory, which is called index dot tt if it's a template uh, toolkit file or dot mason or, or so on and it will automatically grab it for you. So here with you know, five lines you have a working website which listens to slash and returns template and uh, uh, as we've seen before you can have um, parameters and so on. So that's templates. Uh, okay, that's not really a real life example, but that's a bit more complex examples. Where here uh, you have a website to be able to display stories. So we uh, hook a root on slash story slash view slash ID. Okay? And first thing we do is we make sure that the guy is logged in. So it's, uh, it's not the best way to, uh, to check that out, but for this example, we work. So you check if the logged in keyword in the session is defined. If not, then we send an error 
not lo not logged in. Okay. As you can see, session is yet another keyword of the GSM, and sender all is yet another keyword of the GSM. We have, I think, 20 keywords, so that's not too much, too many. Sorry. Uh, it's easy to learn, and once you've learned them, then you can play with them. So, you know, using a session has never been easier. If you say session something, it tries to retrieve the key something from your session, and if you add another argument, then it would store it uh, in this uh, uh, session keyword. And we support uh, a dozen of session um, engines, so you can have file sessions, uh, name cache session, whatever you want. And well, sign error returns uh, returns an, uh, an error. Depending on the context, by default it returns a 404 and displays a built-in uh, uh, error message. But if you put in your views a file called uh, 404, then you can override the, the message that is returned. And here, for instance, we do some database stuff and we get the story um, which ID is from ID, so from the, the URL. And at the end, we display the story. Okay, so we call a uh, display story template with the content being what we fetch from the database. Okay, so that's, uh, it's a bit uh, crappy because I wanted to make that short for this example. That's how you do. And if you, um, you can also bind uh, routes to uh, static files. By default, uh, there is a, a slash public uh, directory in your application. And uh, and that's it. Uh, so everything by default. If you if you type slash public slash something, then it will load a static file from your uh, directory. And you can override that with uh, configuration. Talking about configuration, um, you can alter the configuration of your web application right in the code with the set keyword. So set foo is forty two. Um, but by default, uh, there is a config.yaml in your application. So it's YAML, uh, but you can use uh, any files or other supported. Uh, basically, you can use everything that is supported by a config in something. And what's clever is that there is a directory environment with uh, all the config files and uh, depending on the environment you run, then these uh, configuration keys will override the main one. So basically you have a main config file, config.yaml, and uh, environment slash uh, development will have some keys, uh, some config enable, like debug and so on, and environment slash production uh, will have no debug and so on. So that's very typical uh, of the configuration in, in, in any web framework. Uh, yeah, so as I said, there is a lot of syntax syntactic struggle for building a web app. So for instance, on top of all that stuff, you can add uh, hooks. So hooks are additional code that you want to write. For instance, you have a set of routes, so display story, users, uh, dashboard, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> but you'd like that before executing these routes, okay, when root match, before executing the code, we'd like to check that we have the access to the database or that the user is logged in and so on. So you don't need to duplicate the code, you don't need to write a module, you just have a hook and you say before and then you execute this, uh, this code. The hooks have been completely reworked like this a few months ago and now we have, uh, uh, I think, a dozen of hooks uh, and you can really hook some code in a dozen of precise points in the workflow of the request. So you can say, okay, this hook, I want it to be uh, executed right after we found a route. This hook, I want it to be executed just before we display a template, or just after, or just before we display an error message and so on. So that you can uh, build your application in a standard way, you know, and then uh, make some uh, adjustment uh, where it needs to be uh, adjusted without uh, trashing the, the code. And the other uh, interesting thing is that uh, this is an um, easy way to build up plugins. 
because of course the answer has a, a plugin mechanism, and so writing a dancer plugin is very easy because as uh, you say, you can add routes at runtime. So if so, writing a dancer plugin to have uh, sitemaps, sitemaps, sorry, sitemap, for instance, uh, uh, that's a plugin that uh, displays a map of all your routes, for instance. This plugin, what it does, is it just adds a new route called slash sitemap, which displays all the, the entry points. So that's very easy. And using hooks, you can do very powerful things in your plugin. Okay, uh, until now, all we've done is displaying templates, accessing uh, uh, data, and so on. Uh, but what if you don't want to return HTML? You can uh, change the way Tensor serializes your data. Uh, by seeing set serializer JSON, uh, when you have your root, don't call templates, but just return data, anything, and it will be serialized into JSON. We have YAML and other kind of serializer, and that's very useful. For instance, when you do a REST uh, web service and you want to use JSON, then you you don't have to you don't have to take care about serializing this or anything. You your data is it in UTF-8 or no? What about the encoding? It's all done there, and so this is the easy way to do it. So set serializer JSON, but what you can do is have three routes that returns normal HTML. And then you say serialize a JSON and you put, um, what's it called, brackets, and that's a new scope where all the serializers, uh, all the data will be in JSON. And then when you get out of this scope, then you're in HTML again. So that's quite useful. Session, I was talking about that uh, earlier. You can choose in uh, your configuration which session engine to use. Um, by default, it uses uh, file session stored in the same place of your application. So that's cool for developing, but later on you want to move to something else. And uh, we support a lot of session uh, engine. So here you use it. That's an example where um, when someone tries to log in, so using a post, okay? Post login. Uh, because we are using the post, then params will retrieve uh, the the arguments sent with the the, the, the post uh, request. We retrieve the login, the password, and we call some module to check if the user and passwords uh, match. And then we set user row login. And now we can say that this user is login. So that's easy. Logger uh, then so comes with uh, uh, logging logging facility, which is okay. I mean, the, the I'd like to rewrite the the, the, the logger of Denser. It's, uh, it works fine, but it's not as powerful as uh, we would like. Uh, but uh, you can choose to display the logging in the console or in the file or uh, or in, in or to pipe or something like that. And uh, you can uh, choose. The different level of logging. I think the le the levels are from now a bit hard coded. So you have the usual uh, uh, debug, uh, error, uh, warning, and so on. And you use it by using directly the the, the name of the level uh, you want to um, to to log. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> I think. Just uh, mentioned that uh, the core of Tensor is based based on engines, and so session is actually an engine. I mean, the session engine is a Tensor engine, uh, root engine, and so on. So that that's not very interesting. Okay, that's uh, still on engines. Okay, you can do until now. What I've presented to you is a subset of what you can do with core Tensor. But of course, we have a plugin um, system, and so you can do more with plugins. This is an example of how to use the Dancer plugin uh, Ajax. So it's not the code of the plugin, that's how we use it, okay? As soon as you do use Dancer plugin Ajax, it's loaded, okay? There's nothing fancy to do. You use the module, uh, it's loaded into your Dancer application. 
And usually, dancer plugins add new keywords to the GSM, or they add new roots, or sometimes they do both, and so on. In this case, they add, uh, the, the Ajax plugin adds the Ajax keyword, and that means that it's a new kind of root. Ajax, a path, and some code, as usual. However, this will work only if the request is a post or a get, something else. And if the header is X requested with uh, XML HTTP request, okay? So it filters only requests that are Ajax requests, basically. And that's it. And the thing which is returned, it's up to you to return the data. But if you mix that with a serializer like JSON, so if you set serializer equal JSON, then that's it. You have a, an, an Ajax uh, enable uh, application with a very easy way to write Ajax roots. Another very uh, famous plugin is uh, the database plugin, where you use it, and in your configuration, you have to set up uh, the database server and the databases you want to use. And in your code, you have a new keyword called database, uh, which allows you to run <coughs> queries and get results from uh, the databases, uh, the data set you configure into uh, the, the, the config file. So that's an example. Uh, REST is yet another plugin. Um, so it's, it actually uh, makes it even more easy for you to return uh, um, serialized data. You use the REST plugin, and you call, uh, so that's a, an example of, of using the, the, the plugin, prepare serializer for format. And then all the routes you write, uh, if you happen the column format at the end of the root, then your root for instance, uh, user ID, the root will now support slash user slash ID dot XML, slash user slash ID dot JSON, dot YAML, and so on. And so you don't need to take care about the serializer, and you don't need to take care about what the guy wanted, okay, in terms of, uh, of uh, what formats, what format the user wants the result to be serialized in. So, all you have to do when you want, so that's very useful when you want to write a uh, web service, you know, a uh, public API. Um, say, I don't know, um, say you're writing a, a Twitter-like application and you want to offer the users a public API. All you have to do is write the code and return, so you, you write your API uh, uh, for users, for tweets and so on, and you return the data. And with this uh, plugin, it, the user can decide if uh, they want the data to be in XML, in YAML, in JSON, and so on. And so you don't have to take care of it. So that's yet another step to make it easier to write uh, REST web services. Plugins allow you to extend Dancer DSS, so that's what I said. And that's the Dancer's essentials. So there is a lot more, especially if, um, now that we are in a heavy uh, development phase of Dancer. We're willing to to go for uh, Dancer 2.0. So there are a lot of things being developed. So there is a lot more, so that's yeah, just an example to see that, uh, to show you that Dancer is not just a web framework, it's an ecosystem and it's a community. And actually, I would say the ecosystem and the community tends now, tend now to be more important than actually the code base. Uh, because the code base is relatively small. The concepts have been uh, inspired by Sinatra, but now we, are, we have uh, diverged from Sinatra, and we are doing our own exploration. And yeah, the community and uh, the ecosystem is what makes Tensor awesome. So that's an example of, you know, template session plugins, 
so here you have example of templates. May I, may I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, what uh, I did never did a bad job of them, but what really interests me is in what ways you now differ or want to differ from Sinatra. What what are the main ideas uh, you want to change or? Uh, oh, uh, we okay the uh, root definition, the path. Mm. We provided uh, more flexibilities, mm -hmm. like uh, regex and, and advanced parallel parsing and so on. They didn't have that at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the hooks, the very precise way to uh, plug your mm -hmm. uh, code in different uh, at the different point mm -hmm. of the workflow, they didn't have that. And um, the GSL is different. The keywords uh, are a bit different. Uh, the way you write plugins is different. Um, well, you know, the, the global philosophy is more or less the same. Uh, so Sinatra and Ruby and Flask in Python mm -hmm. are roughly the same, the same idea. Uh, th this idea came from Catalyst or? No, 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 no. Uh, really from micro web frameworks. So these are other stuff and yet other stuff. So it's really there are a lot of um, distribution on CIP and there are more than 50 distribution now and yeah our community rocks so that's the that's the the other uh, great part of Tensor so we have a great community where every everybody is nice and polite and you know tries to move forward uh, we have uh, 332 GitHub watchers um, <coughs> Almost 100 GitHub forks about uh, Bird Dancer. Then, uh, if anyone has a laptop with wireless, uh, with internet connection and wants to go on GitHub and, and, and fork <laughs> the Bird Dancer, then he would be the number 100. And that's something. Um, and we have uh, yeah, more than uh, 60 uh, contributors. Committers. So the idea is that you join us by creating your own uh, dancer framework and then uh, showing up on IRC channel and mailing list and try to uh, help us uh, make web framework even easier. So you can follow us on Perlet on Twitter, on GitHub. Uh, we have a uh, mailing list and of course the website <coughs> And we are on ircperl.org hash dancer. And if you want the demo, you know that uh, the demo effect when you start something and it doesn't work and, and, and so on. <laughs> well, we, we solved that problem by doing the demonstration already because that whole presentation is actually uh, running in Denser. So you already had the, the demonstration of what a Denser application can be. Uh, it's called Broadway and it's a <laughs> Denser based slideshow engine, so Broadway because. Yeah. And now I don't know if I have a few minutes I can show you the code and show you how we can uh, build up uh, a dancer application like that. And I'm not going to use VIM because I'm more in the max user. So as I understand I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to try to be very quick. Oops. Okay, so can you see that? Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so that's um, the application you get when you do dancer minus a uh, your app. So it's actually more um, than what you get because it's on Git, so you have the good files and uh, make file that appears is there as well. Read me, we don't really care. <laughs> uh, big, mm, sorry. <laughs> No. We do care, let's <laughs> write documentation, but for this talk, because I'm uh, short in time, I'm not going to show you that. Builder is specific to uh, Broadway, so basically your Tensor application has a config.yaml, 
okay, configuration file where uh, you have various configurations and environments slash development and production uh, .yaml. So that's what I explained. You can uh, have specific configuration for your environment. Uh, public is where you have static files, okay? So here I have redefined the 404 uh, page and I have some images so you can see that the, the Sinatra, PNG and the Optimus JPEG is there. And sessions is directory where uh, file sessions are stored because it's in development mode. And when you do that, so minus A, you have bin and app.pl, which is very simple. Use data, mm -hmm. use Broadway and dance. Okay. Um, where is it? It works. Sorry? Out of the box. It works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Out of the box. <laughs> um, so where is Broadway? Well, Broadway is in our lib environment. Okay. So when you deploy a new dancer application, it creates a lib directory for you, and it also creates your app.pm with a default uh, stuff. And in our case, we rewrote it to use the Ajax uh, plugin, and we have Broadway API and Broadway UI. Okay, well then, they are here. So let's start with UI. And this is, so you know it's like, 55 lines or so another spaces. So this stuff here, uh, you can't see. Can, can you see anything really? Uh, maybe uh, the boxes of the variant Yeah, I should. Uh, So basically, that's the slash, so that's the main uh, root. And I'm going to make that a bit bigger still. Okay. And so uh, when you go on slash, uh, tokens empty hash, and basically that's something that's an option so we don't care about that. We go and display slideshow template with uh, nothing in it. Okay? And when you go back to the Broadway, templates are not in the templates directory, they are in the views directory. I don't know why <laughs> history decision and now we can't change it. But in views you can see that there are a lot of slides stuff. And here at the end, there is slideshow.tt. Okay, this is special code for something else, but basically, oops. Uh, what we do is window slide equals zero, and div ID equal uh, slide. And so that means that the rest will be triggered with Ajax um, queries. And when you display a template, so in this case, a slideshow, you don't directly display slideshow.template. You put that into a layout. And here we have the main layout, which is the crappy HTML with the, the dancer logo there. And here we have a special <coughs> template line, which is, oops, sorry, hash content. Okay, and that is the content of the slide that will be displayed, and so that the layout is still the same, basically. And we have, where is it again? Uh, and basically, what we have been um, in the layout is that we load broadway.js, JavaScript. And here you can see that Broadway Next is 
the post uh, request, and so we use jQuery to send the post request to the slash next uh, URL, and with uh, nothing, and this stuff will load the content back into the slideshow, uh, the slide ID, okay? So I have to stop now, sorry about that. Um, if you want to have a better look at Broadway, you can fork it on uh, GitHub. And yeah, you can contact us uh, on uh, the Dancer mailing list website at RSC. And I hope this all makes sense. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> If you have questions, we can talk about that in the hall because I have to stop.